Hello everyone, this is day 44 of Polity Daily Drill. Let's begin. First question, consider the following functional items. Public amenities, regulation of slaughterhouses and tanneries, roads and bridges, women and child development, fire services. How many of the above are not a part of 12th schedule of the Indian constitution? 12th schedule, what is 12th schedule? 12th schedule contains a list of 18 functional items or topics on which the municipalities may be allowed to make laws if the state legislature by law provides for it. Now, what kind of topics are there? So, the 12th schedule contains topics like urban planning, including town planning. Of course, public amenities is a topic there planning of land use, construction of buildings, economic and social developmental planning, roads and bridges, fire services, public health, sanitation, etc. Solid waste management is a topic, safeguarding the interests of weaker sections, including handicapped and mentally retarded. Or things like, you know, urban forestry, slum improvement. However, Women and child development as a direct entry is not mentioned under Schedule 12. In fact, this is mentioned under Schedule 11. And what is Schedule 11? Schedule 11 contains a list of 29 functional items, 29 topics on which the panchayats can be allowed to make laws. So, 4 is not a part of 12th Schedule. How many of the above? Only 1. A being the right answer. Moving on to question number two. Consider the following statements about High Court judges in India. The age of retirement of High Court judges was 60 at the commencement of the constitution. And number two, the minimum age to become judge of High Court was 50 years, which was repealed by the 42nd amendment of the constitution. Now, of course, we know that the age of superannuation or the age of retirement of Supreme Court judges is 65 years and for High Court judges is 62 years. However, you would be surprised to know that originally at the commencement of the constitution, the age of retirement of High Court judges was actually 60 years, right? It was made or rather increased to 62 through the 15th Amendment Act of the year 1963, right? So, one is absolutely correct. Now, coming to number two, there is no such minimum age criteria now, nor was this a criteria back during the days of commencement. This has never been a provision in our country that we have a minimum age criteria for the superior court judges, that is the high court judges or the supreme court judges, right? So, 2 is incorrect, 1 is correct. So, which of these statements given above is or are correct? A. 1 only. Moving on to question number 3. How many of the following is or are the special powers of Rajya Sabha? Special powers of Rajya Sabha. Let's see. First one, authorizing the creation of a new All India Service. So, as we read, I'll keep on telling you the article as well. So, yes, of course, we know this is article 312. If it is urgent or expedient in national interest, then the Raj Sabha can authorize the parliament to create a new All India Service. One is correct. Number two, authorizing the parliament to make laws on stateless subjects. Yes or no? Yes, of course. This is Article 249 is correct. Number three, authorizing the parliament to take away the fundamental rights except 20 and 21 during a national emergency. This is Article 359 and it is not a special power of Rajya Sabha. In fact, it does not need the parliamentary approval. All that is needed is a presidential order and your right to move to court to protect any of your fundamental rights except 20 or 21 can be taken away during a national emergency. This is wrong. Number four. Initiating the removal of Vice President, yes, Article 67, Clause B. So, the 
resolution to remove the vp can be initiated can be moved only in the rajya sabha where it must be passed by an effective majority and then in the lok sabha must be passed by a simple majority so four is also correct how many are the special powers three one two and four right answer is c moving on to question number four consider the following statements about article 30 of the indian constitution it guarantees all minorities whether based on religion or language the right to establish and administer educational institutions of their choice yes absolutely correct this is actually article 30 clause 1 just a point for you to remember our constitution does recognize two types of minorities based on religion based on language however it does not define what would constitute a religious minority and what would constitute a linguistic minority anyway one is correct number 2 the right granted by article 30 is absolute and cannot be regulated by the government we know very well rights are never absolute in our country they are always qualified in nature subject to restrictions and of course we know that regulations by government are allowed particularly regarding educational standards health and safety measures because we know very well you have a right to administer you do not have the right to mal administer an educational institution so two is wrong and number 3 under article 30 the state can discriminate against minority educational institutions while providing grants in aid to educational institutions uh, this is wrong why because the same article 30 its clause 2 says very clearly what the state shall not in granting aid to educational institutions discriminate against any educational institution on the ground that it is under the management of a minority whether that minority is a religious minority or a linguistic minority so discrimination not allowed how many of the above statements are correct only one is correct a moving on to the last question for today how many of the following are not constitutional bodies mind you not constitutional bodies so national commission for women we know this body was formed in the year 1992 by a statute by a law ncw act so it is not a constitutional body ncm the national commission for minorities again established in 1992 through the ncm act statutory body competition commission of india yes this body was established in the year 2003 under a law called the competition act of 2002 so statutory body fourth special officer for linguistic minorities this is actually a body which is mentioned in the constitution article 350 capital b a later edition of course this body was added through the 7th amendment act of the year 1956 right so 1 2 and 3 there are three such bodies which are not constitutional right answer is c only three this brings us to an end of our discussion for today let's meet tomorrow till then that's all for me jai hind